from the number one best-selling author of Life Rescripted. You are now tuning in to the Year of Purpose podcast. I'm Zephan Moses Blacksburg. Good morning, everyone. This is Zephan Moses Blacksburg from the Year of Purpose podcast. And today I'm joined by Mitch Matthews. And Mitch is a keynote speaker, success coach, and best selling author. He speaks to student, corporate, nonprofit, and association audiences around the world on the power of dream, think, do. In 2006, Mitch started something he called the Big Dream Gathering. Originally, it was supposed to be something his friends and family could do for a few hours to get clear on their dreams, but the simple concept became a movement that hasn't stopped since. Thousands of dreams have been launched as a result. He's become a well-respected thought leader on coaching and workplace mentoring, plus he's created a coach training program that has been utilized around the globe. You can listen to Mitch on his popular weekly podcast called Dream Think Do on iTunes, and you can also listen to him right here today on the Year of Purpose podcast. What's going on, Mitch? Thank you so much, Zeph. That's awesome, buddy. I appreciate that. It's great to be here. Yeah, man. I left out the highly caffeinated part, so I'm going to say <laughs> everybody who's tuning in right now, his bio also says, Bitch proudly lives a highly caffeinated lifestyle in Des Moines, Iowa. So I just I just had to add that in there. Because... I, I appreciate that because it's true and, and uh, <laughs> very accurate for today. So I love it. I just, I actually got into this Yerba Mate tea recently. Uh, I'm like yeah. a huge coffee guy. I do my bulletproof coffee quite often, but oh, yeah. trying some different stuff just to it's see. It's always good. It and especially when we're talking caffeine. And I know I've got a, a number of friends that are just complete health nuts. And, you know, I, I kind of exercise. I do a lot of different things. I try to eat right. But I told them, I'm like, you know what, caffeine, I just enjoy it. It's God's gift to us. And so that's that's just not th- something I'm going to eliminate. I will experiment. <laughs> uh, you know, the day is long with it, but I'm not going to eliminate it. So good stuff. Well, yeah. I am energized. I'm ready to go. It's, you know, at the time of recording this, uh, coming off of a book launch, a bestseller book launch. It's crazy. Yeah, I was going to say that needs to be called a bestseller book <laughs> yeah. launch. That's uh, You hit it out of the park, man. Congratulations on that. Yeah, so, we're starting 2016 with a bang. And, you know, I, it's great to be starting it with you. This is my first recording in 2016. So thank you for being here. And um, absolutely, I'm kind of I'm excited uh, one to just get to talk with you because I love I love your work, but also uh, you know we were joking before we hit record that you know there is there's a certain thing like jet lag, you know you go to Australia come back you experience jet lag, but there's also something called uh, you know book launch lag that it's something similar to your brain. So I'm I'm kind of curious just to see what comes out of this interview. We might go a lot of different places because of that. Yeah, so if I slur my words, you guys can't judge me here. <laughs> right. But uh, let's let's dive in. I mean, I was reading a lot about you, and and your story starts at quite a young age, actually. You yeah. you you know, I thought that I was starting young, but man, I looked at when you started doing a lot of this stuff, and I mean, you started around like eleven or twelve years old, working in in a, a bike store, right? Well, yeah, I've been weird from an early age, but I can tell you though, I did not have a bestseller at twenty six. So kudos <laughs> to you, man. But yeah, I I I'm always been weird, a bit of an extreme personality. And I, uh, very early on, uh, about 10 or 11 kind of fell in love with bikes. And so I thought my dream job was to own a bike shop. And I grew up in a really small town in Iowa and there was one bike shop and it was on the corner, two blocks off of our square. And it was, you know, hole in the wall kind of place. The Goodwill store was next door and the strip club was behind it. <laughs> but I, I set my sights on that. And, uh, uh, so basically every day of the summer when I was 12, I rode my bike up to that bike shop and spent two, three, sometimes all, you know, five, six, seven hours a day hanging out, um, trying to help. I'd take out the trash, I'd move stuff around, I'd wipe things down, I'd do whatever I could to just not get arrested for loitering. And at the end of that summer, uh, they decided to hire me, which I so appreciated. And uh, so, you know, I'm proud to say that at 13, I had my first dream job, but it's because I was willing to stalk the owner, <laughs> you know, at scary levels. But uh, yeah, at, that, at, fir- at 13, I had my first dream job. And at 14, they took me to a sales seminar um, and so after that, I had a new dream job because I, I realized, my gosh, what's this, you know, what's this industry? What's this, uh, you know, kind of career? And so um, my first dream job led to that next dream job or at least that course for that dream job. So, yeah, I, I kind of started at a young age and um, it's paying off. Well, 
it's really cool how the dream expands too. Like, you know, as you learned more of what was possible and your awareness grew, you started to realize that the dream could be bigger than where it was when you first started, right? Like, Absolutely. you know, the dream obviously isn't just, you know, to, to run that bike shop anymore. And you've done things that are, you know, a, a thousand times bigger than that. Yeah. But, and I think that's one of the things that's misunderstood about pursuing dreams, especially when we talk about dream jobs, that I think there's this, you know, kind of misperception that uh, there's only one dream job. Like if you ask somebody, hey, what's your dream job? They think, you know, so many people lock up because they think they got to, it's like, I, I can just pick one and that's going to be my one thing. And and I've realized, and, and also I've done a, a, over a hundred interviews with people who have achieved what they would call dream jobs. And we identify dream jobs as either doing work that you love or doing work that allows you to do something you love and and I've uh, you know had this experience and all the people that I that I talked with as well have had this experience that usually what it is is it's it's deciding what's the dream job for this season what's yeah. the dream job for this season and giving yourself permission to pursue that explore that experiment with that and find that and then also continue to stay open to what's that next dream job and you know it's it's not about you know changing jobs every 6 months but it's about being on a course of discovery and that journey of, of continuing to uncover those things. And it's amazing, uh, you know, what, what each season has brought up and there, you know, there's been some, some low times as well, but, uh, you know, I, I think you're on that same course. You, you've continued to dig in, you've figured out what your passions are, what your talents are, where those things line up, but you got clear on your why and man, everything else has kind of fallen into place. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's crazy to see how the dominoes fall. And I really like that, you made this distinction of you can, you know, do the work that you love, but you could also do work that allows you to do the things that you love. This was actually something uh, that was huge for me probably about a year, year and a half ago. I read a book called Vagabonding, and it's kind of this art mm -hmm. form of long-term travel around the world. And one of the big things that were brought up in that book was that, you know, you can come home and work a job for six months and know that it's your means to an end. You know, it's it's your method of saving up the money you need if your dream is to travel the world. Yeah. And I think that it's you brought up a really important point there that, you know, I think you can really love something if it allows you to do the things that you really want to do, right? Like it's it's still a job at the end of the day. It's still, yep. you, you might have to report to someone else. You might have to show up nine to five Monday through Friday, but it's, allowing you to live the lifestyle that you really want. So I, I think Absolutely. that's such an important, you know, differentiator between uh, that and, and having a job that you love, because both of them are great. But I think there's an option there that people sometimes forget. Absolutely. And I know I know for me personally, uh, you know, I've, I've had some peaks and valleys. So I've had what I call bridge jobs, which are those jobs that get you from one place to the next. But just kind of like a bridge, you wouldn't want to live there. You, you can appreciate a bridge for what it is, but it's not a home. Right. Uh, I've had some bridge jobs. And when you're in those bridge jobs, you want to focus on what you can learn, what you can earn and who you can meet, um, all of those things. And, and one of my particular bridge jobs was uh, I was in the pharmaceutical industry and a number of those, the, the opportunities that I had there were great fits, uh, but one in particular was a really bad fit. Uh, but I use that as, as kind of uh, incentive to really get me on this course of starting our own uh, organization, our own company, um, all of those things. And so what I, I started to appreciate, although that job was a bad fit, I didn't really like what I was doing. Um, you know, the company, there was some frustrations with the company, all that, but I could still sit there with a big goofy grin on my face and still deliver excellence at the same time, knowing, because, you know, one of the big things was, is this was also taking care of my family and funding me, but it also gave me some flexibility so that I could be doing more of what I wanted to do on the side. And so that's what I found with a lot of people is, is that sometimes it's that job, you know, kind of pays for you to be able to, you know, live while you're doing a side hustle, um, you know, and kind of maybe growing something on the side. But one of the other things that I've found is that there are certain people where their day job, they're good at it, they're passionate, you know, relatively passionate about it. But, you know, one of my favorite interviews from Dream Think Do was of a uh, an extreme swimmer, a guy named Kevin Haw, who lives out in San Francisco. He's a corporate attorney, really is very good at what he does, all of those things. But his true passion 
is extreme swimming. Now you can't really make money at extreme swimming, but I'll give you an idea of what this guy does is like, you know, for me to go swim in a couple of laps at the pool at the Y that's extreme swimming. Right. <laughs> but for Kevin, Awe, he lives in, in San Francisco. So, you know, most people would, ex, you know, uh, say extreme swimming would be to take a boat out to Alcatraz and swim back. I mean, that's, that's high grade, you right. know, high risk kind of swimming. Kevin without a whims, uh, without a wetsuit will actually swim out from, from this, you know, basically from a dock, he will swim out to Alcatraz, swim around Alcatraz, and swim back. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I mean, we're talking waters of uh, 40, 50, 60 degrees, and he's able to do this. He absolutely loves it. Like, he loves it. So he'll go and do things like that two, three times a week, right? And it's one of those things that, uh, you know, he is very good at what he does, but a big part of you know, why his current job is a dream job is it allows him to do and, you know, the extreme swimming, something he's really passionate about. So, you know, and those, those, the, the part of the job that we call the 20% suck factor. Yeah. And that's, you know, anybody, anybody that I've talked with that have had quote unquote dream jobs, there's usually something that's there. And, and we say, if you can hit that 20% mark, if your suck factor is 20% or less, you're probably in a dream job, meaning you know, 20% or less of what you do you don't really like or is not your favorite. Um, you know, that that's probably a dream job. And it's one of those that you can put up with a whole lot of that that 20% suck factor if you're able to do those things either in your work that you love or outside your work that you love. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, a pretty good place to be. We've all heard of the 80-20 principle. And so I would say if you can love, you know, 80% of it and 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 or embrace the suck embrace the 20 <laughs> percent of right. it uh that's that's always been kind of one of my mottos just with i'm a rower so anytime we're in a oh, tough yeah. spot kind of like my internal voice just goes come on embrace the suck let's go i love that that's awesome well and i think that's also a misconception though is i think a lot of people you know people i think that it's sad uh but i think a lot of people even hear the concept of a dream job as an example and they want to poo poo it Right. I've, I've got a grumpy uncle. And if I throw out the term dream job, you know, I'll hear guffaws and scoffing and <laughs> oh, eye rolls and all those things. Right. Um, but I think what's sad is I do think that that concept is something we should aspire to. I, we were put here for a reason and to do amazing things. So that that would equate to being a dream job. If we're getting to walk those things out, that's a dream job. But I think as people start to grasp that um, and maybe even to start to attain that. I think sometimes they think, well, if I don't love everything within it, then this isn't my dream job yet. And, I, right. you know, I always love to, you know, talk through that, and make people aware of that because, you know, there's just going to be something you don't enjoy doing. Like as an entrepreneur for over a decade, like I love so many aspects of this adventure, but I hate tax stuff. Right. I mean, I just hate it. I don't I, I've got a great accountant, a great tax guy, all that stuff. But that stuff just kind of bothers me. Right. Yeah. It, it's it's in my suck factor. But that's OK, because it's less than 20 percent and we could be real strategic. I'll turn it into a game, all of that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, that's one of the things I try to encourage people on is, is that no job is going to be perfect. I think that that's all something we can understand. But to be able to say, all right, how do you continue to diminish that that 20 percent or less, um, you know, and, and all of that. So I love the embrace the suck i think that's, that's great <laughs> and so i have a question about that in a second but first i had to mention i went to san francisco about a year ago and i remember uh you know visiting like the fisherman's wharf and pier 39 and you know just where the boat takes off to take you over to alcatraz we did that ride too but we're, we're sitting there on one of the docks and i see these people that are just walking down into the water and going out for a swim and I mean, most of them are wearing sweatsuits, but I or, or uh, swimsuits. But I'm just thinking these guys are crazy. And <laughs> yeah, there's so, a club of them, and it's yeah. it's, one of those, it's amazing. You know, that people can check out the episode. It's it's a fascinating and inspiring episode. But there's a club, and basically one of the challenges of the club is that you're supposed to uh, you get a trophy or you get your a plaque on a trophy if you swim. I think it's the number of miles for your age. Wow. So yeah, Kevin's been able to achieve that uh, for I think three or four, maybe even five years, something like that. And I mean, it's just incredible to think about it. it one of the things we were talking about was like, what do you have to worry about? And he's like, you know, you, you have to be concerned a little bit about ships and you have to watch out for sharks. And I'm like, holy shnikes, <laughs> you know, like that's crazy. Uh, but he's like, you know, doing something like that, starting your day that way 
uh, it sure puts, you know, sitting in a boardroom in perspective. It, it sure puts dealing with a grumpy client in perspective. He's like, this is nothing compared to, you know, keeping my bearings when I'm out in the middle of the ocean, you know? Oh, sure. So it, 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 you know, it's all about that, that finding that those, those things that you are passionate about and being able to find ways to do it. Well, so let me ask you about kind of part of this 20% suck factor, but also when you're going from one extreme to the other. So for example, you know, one of my big dreams, at least for last year, was that I wanted to travel a ton. And I flew 25 flights across the country that I travel hacked for free and saw 40 out of the 50 states. And so I accomplished the goal, right? But how do you go from such a high like that to you know you're when you're in that sucky part like what are some maybe things on a small scale where you can kind of take a step back and look at it realistically because it's almost bipolar in a sense it's it's like going from you know being surrounded by your friends and everybody singing happy birthday to like you know you went to blow out the candles and lit everything on fire by accident sure. like <laughs> yeah, how exactly. do you go from one end of the spectrum to the other or try to stay at that like happy medium where it's it, like my fear would be that um, you would you would keep your expectations low, which is a terrible thing to do. Like, why, why would you do that? You, of course, want to hope for the best and be optimistic in any situation. What are some little things that you could do to, you know, whether it's embrace the 20 percent or even just uh, keep yourself level headed throughout this whole spectrum? Absolutely. That's a great question. I love it. And that is something that, you know, what's interesting, I think people experience and, and you got an audience of high achievers, you got an audience of globe changers and people who want to do big things. And, and, you know, that's, that's who I love to, to interact with and, and work with as well. And, and one of the things, especially with high achievers that you'll find is just that they will set a course uh, for a big dream, a big goal, whether it's their career or whether it's something on the side. I love that goal of, of, you know, travel and being able to see all the States and all of those things. But in the midst of that, you're going to hit, you're going to hit some challenges. Uh, you know, I mean, that's a part of the journey. That's the richness, all of that. But one of the things that I've found, especially when you're in those low points is, and, and I'm a simple guy, I have to boil things down to simple concepts and, and ways to be able to remember things. So, what, when I'm in those moments, I have to think gratitude and latitude. Um, and what I mean by that is gratitude is, you know, gratitude is the, the body's great antidepressant. You know, it's, it's one of those things that a lot of people, um, you know, ha- talk about uh, gratitude and the power of gratitude, but it really is an antidote for, uh, worry and stress and all of those things, even at those low points to be able to look around and find something that you're grateful for, to be able to find something that you can identify, whether it's a relationship whether it's even being in the moment, you know, there, I'm guessing with all of those flights, you probably had more than one or at least one canceled flight, or maybe you got to, you know, your, your gate and they, they let you know that the, the plane didn't come in. So now you got to go all the way to the other side of the airport, all that stuff, you know, whether it's just inconveniences or, or whatever, you know, still finding those things you can be grateful for, you know, being grateful that we're in an age of airplanes, like God, God put me in a very specific, I'm so grateful for the time that we're in because, you know, I love an airplane. My wife just flew to Australia and, you know, like to think about making that trip, you know, by ship or whatever it would have taken years and years ago. Right. I can't even fathom that stuff. So I'm very grateful for the the time frame that I'm in. So gratitude is one of those things. And, And it's not just enough to list it. Listing things that you're grateful for does move the needle. It starts to, you know, release serotonin and dopamine. And those are kinds of things in your body that actually help you to feel pleasure, feel, help you to feel happy. They actually even help you remember things more, think more creatively, all of that. But if you really want to move the needle, don't just write something down that you're grateful for. Give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to really feel that gratitude, Mm -hmm. whether it's for something big, something small, whatever it is, really feel that. And so that's the gratitude part of it, because that also helps you to be in the moment, because the latitude part is about kind of getting yourself to a higher visioning point, kind of going from where you're at to allowing yourself to also go to that 15,000 foot or that 30,000 foot view to both 
remind yourself of, hey, <laughs> I put myself in this situation by wanting to, you know, setting this goal of traveling the globe, or I put myself in this situation, you know, there, there were times when I was building our business on the side and, you know, working really, really late or only sleeping a couple of hours. And, you know, I, I could find myself almost putting my grumpy pants on because I was tired, right? Yeah. But I'd have to remind myself, like, I, I'm doing this for a reason, right? It was kind of that vision, but also within that, also be looking forward, being able to say, what am I looking forward to? And even, even when you're in the midst of, of going after a big goal, like all of that travel, to be able to even give yourself that, uh, the ability to remind yourself of why you're doing it, but also giving yourself that ability to say, what's next? 2015 was the year of travel. What do I want 2016 to be? Because gratitude is powerful, but when we talk about latitude, one of the the other things of latitude that's really powerful is anticipation. Mm. And uh, that anticipation is one of the most powerful emotions that we can feel. It also produces all sorts of good chemical reactions in your body as well. So giving yourself a chance to say, all right, 2015, this is, you know, my goal is travel. 2016, what do I want? my goals to be in 2016 and giving yourself a chance to vision, a chance to feel that anticipation and really combining the the gratitude and the latitude are, I've found some of those things that really help to lift you out of the, those, those low places that just come when you go after those big dreams and big goals. Oh, totally. And it's funny that you bring up the whole airplane situation because in August of 2015, I flew from my home in Maryland to Los Angeles for, um, you know, my, my full-time company is a video production company. And so I'm flying out there for a client and within like three hours of getting there, my, all my accounts got hacked, my iPhone, oh. my MacBook, everything's wiped, remotely locked, all my credit cards shut down, like everything. And I was so grateful that I could remember my password to get into my Sky Miles account and book an overnight flight back home Holy and cow. like get home to take care of it. And in this whole, you know, race to just like fight or flight and, and get home, I didn't realize that the only seat that was left on the plane, which was the only one that I booked, was a first class seat. And so this whole time, I'm just like, you know, freaking out. I got to get home. I've got to get the credit cards figured out. And, you know, there's no money left. It's all gone. And I get on the plane and they're like, do you want a hot towel? And I'm like, you don't know how much I want a hot towel. And then they're like, two. Yeah, of course. And then like I get a warm meal and I'm just like, this is amazing. And I'm in the lie flat bed. And then they come around. Do you want a warm cookie? And I'm just like. You don't even realize how much I want a warm cookie. <laughs> and a blankie. I want a blankie. Right, right. That like, is awesome. It's so true. And and it, it is in those in those moments where you do have to find it. And not in some sort of Pollyanna, you know, rainbows, butterflies. And it, we're, I'm sure you weren't running through the meadows singing a lovely song, right? right. But it, it still allows you to get back to work you know, and to engage and all of those things. So uh, <laughs> I, I don't love the story of you being hacked, but I do love the story of you overcoming it. Well, I think the important thing to take away is like, you know, you have to choose to see that, right? Like I could have just as easily gotten on the plane and started talking to the person next to me and said, oh my God, I've been hacked. This is the worst day ever. You know, I, I could have perpetuated that. Or, you know, you can kind of pause for a second, sit back and say, holy crap, I'm on a plane in first class. I just got a hot towel. I'm getting a warm meal tonight. I'm getting warm cookies. Like I'm getting taken care of at a time where everything around me is not getting taken care of. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. And it is, and it really is giving yourself that permission to feel gratitude. Cause I think, you know, part of your brain's going to fight that a little bit. You know, there, there, your, your brain has a pretty good BS, uh, monitor, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's always looking for crap that it can just throw out, right? And that's why a lot of times people are huge fans of affirmations. And th there's some power in affirmations. There's no doubt. But the challenge with affirmations is if you start to say, you know, you're in that situation going, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm here. I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm here. Your internal brain BS monitor is going to go, nope, uh-uh. <laughs> you know, I can give you a thousand reasons why I'm not happy, why I'm not healthy, and why I'm not here. All of those things, right? But if you if you actually kind of, again, go after, give yourself that permission to even look for, hey, what's something I'm grateful for in this moment? 
What's yeah. something small but significant that I'm grateful for in this moment? It's interesting. Your 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 brain. What's interesting about your brain is it has that powerful BS indicator or monitor to be able to say, nope, that's crap. I don't believe that, right? But you give your brain a question, your brain almost can't help itself but start to dig in. Dig in. That's why I always say, you know, don't just say, oh, well, you know, I'm grateful for blah blah blah. To actually give yourself the the chance to say, what am I grateful for? in this moment. Yeah. And then allow yourself, let, allow your brain to search it. I, our brains are kind of like Google. Like you, you plug in a search term, it can't help itself. It starts to search it. Right. <laughs> and it's that to be able to say, what am I grateful for in this moment? Or even in those low times to be able to say, what's something small, but yeah. significant that I'm grateful for in this moment. And it's amazing what your brain might come up with. Now, if your brain's like mine, you know, I, I love to be an optimistic, positive person, but there's also a grumpy old man deep down in my heart, <laughs> my brain, right? So sometimes I might ask that of myself and go, I'll give you a thousand things I'm not grateful for. It's like, nope, not the question, right? It's what am I grateful for in this moment? And, and to really sit in that and then allow yourself to feel some of it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to shift gears just a little bit here as we round this off. You know, we heard a good amount of, you know, how you got started and, and what happened there. And then we had a great conversation here about gratitude and, you know, a lot of things that I think people tuning in should really put into place for this year. I'd love to just kind of round everything off and hear a little bit about like Dream, Think, Do, where this has brought you and just like catch us up to speed of where we are today. Absolutely. I love it. So thank you for that. Well, Dream Thing Do, uh, you know, obviously is the name of my podcast and and been wildly blessed. I mean, you've got an incredible list of people that you've had on and and I've uh, been really blessed. I, I, we actually launched at the same time. We we were, I remember being on the new and noteworthy. Oh, no way. Uh, yeah. And then on that list together, which is kind of fun to think about. And I was like, man, that dude's rocking it. Like <laughs> yeah. I, I felt that holy jealousy around what you were doing, man. That's great. Um, so, but yeah, I've been able to interview people like Brennan Burchard and Lewis Howes and, uh, Jeff Goins was just recently on the show and, and what, you know, what's exciting about having a podcast and if people don't have a podcast, you know, obviously it's, it, it, there's a lot of, a lot of great podcasts out there, but one of the best reasons to have a podcast is to have an excuse to reach out to your heroes. You know, I just saw a, a, a Ted, uh, talk, somebody shot me a Ted talk, said, you're going to love this Ted talk. And I watched it and it's got, I don't know, a few million views and it's fascinating, right? And now with this podcast, I just my my next thing after I enjoy something like that is to think I'm going to invite them to be on Dream Thing too. And yeah. so I did. I sent an email. They're over in England. Sent an email. Invited them. They they got back to me. Their team member got back to me. Said, Yeah, Margaret would love to be on. So I'm going to be you know interviewing this person. So I love I love having that excuse. But Dream Thing Do is is really all about helping people to dream bigger, think better, and do more. Do more of what they were put on the planet to do. And Dream Think Do hopefully is a bit of a catchphrase, but it's also something I stole. Uh, which I feel really good about. Because, <laughs> um, but basically, dream, think, do, I stole it from the scientific method. Okay. Uh, and I really love the scientific method. It's as a recovering perfectionist, scientific method really helped to set me free a little bit on that. So, you know, when you think about the scientific method, it's all about kind of first discovering, clarifying what it is you want to prove or disprove, right? And then you build a hypothesis, you think through a plan, you make a best guess at how something's going to go, and then you experiment. Yeah. Right. And you learn from that experiment and then you adjust and evaluate. Well, that's dream, think, do. The, the dreaming is to say, what is it that I want to do or achieve or experience? Then the thinking is being able to say, all right, what's my plan? How do I want to go about that? And I really do believe in separating those two because if we start thinking, if we start planning too early, we'll stifle what's created. You know, I mean, if the Wright brothers, uh, they said, we want to fly. Right. They, they owned a bike shop. I, I love the Wright brothers for a lot of different reasons. But one of the main reasons is they owned a bike shop. That's like that's my family. yo. Right. And, yeah. and if they would have said, you know, if they would have moved into planning too early, they would have known they never had enough money. I mean, there were other people in the world that were way more funded, well funded than them. But they said, no, we want to we want to fly. And to be able to say, how could we do that, right? And and all of that. So to be able to dream, think, do, to be able to separate those things out, to really dream first, think second, and then do, take action, start to experiment. Um, so I love finding more and more people that are doing that and and interviewing them for the show and, and thought leaders, globe changers, people you've never heard of. I just uh, 
uh, interviewed a, an amazing gal who's actually up in the Yukon. Um, wow. Like it gets it gets to below 100 degrees below zero oh my where she lives. But she and a group of people helped to create a uh, maker space in this little village that they're in. And we talked about how do you do that? How do you get everybody on board in a place where, you know, there's significant times a year where they only have two or three hours of daylight for crying out loud. You know, I mean, talk about a place where community is needed, but, you know, rarely seen in a lot of these places. So we talk about things like that. So I love, I love interviewing people. So that's uh, the dream thing do is, you know, the podcast, but it's also really our mission. And so I get to do that through the podcast, but I also get to do that through my speaking and through coaching and through some of our coach programs that we have as well. Very cool. So, I mean, obviously we could go on for the next three hours. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But I don't know if that, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) everybody like that. Yeah. And I know we're catching up later this week, but what is the best place for people to, you know, should they go to the podcast? Is there a website they should check out? You know, how can they kind of keep track of everything with you and uh, stay up to date? Oh, up to date. My Just accent changed there. Or Australian. Man. <laughs> I'm sure what that was. That, there's that uh, Told you book that, lag. I love yeah, it. Yeah, that book lag. Yeah. So but, uh, uh, um, they can go to mitchmatthews.com okay. or dreamthinkdo.com. And uh, that will allow you to kind of find out more about what we're doing, but also allow you to grab all the episodes of um, our podcast. So if you want to get more specific, you can go to mitchmatthews.com backslash iTunes or just even go to iTunes and and uh, just search Dream Think Do and we'll we'll be right there. But I'd love, love to have people um, come check it out and be a part of the Dream Think Do community as well. I know you're, you're inspiring people and, and I think that uh, we're inspiring the same people in different ways. So love to share a community. Yeah, definitely. And I know you are working on a book, so something for people to look forward to in the near future here. As uh, Mitch has a book coming out soon. And so definitely, you know, I'm sure if you're following over on the podcast and things like that, you'll find out when that is becoming available. But uh, Mitch, thanks so much for for spending time with me today. And this has been awesome and uh, can't wait to uh, keep in touch and, and chat more. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to this being the first of many conversations. Keep bringing the awesome, though, Zeph. You're just doing amazing work. And again, congratulations on the book launch, too. Thanks so much. Hey, everyone. It's Zeph. Did you like this episode? Be sure to subscribe so that you can tune in next week and tell a friend about the show. If you want access to free training and exclusive interviews on success, happiness, lifestyle design, and adventure, visit me at yearofpurpose.com. Until next time, go out and let life surprise you so that you can live a life rescripted. scripted